Good morning, everyone. My name is Pooja Chivedi. I'm from Emerald Publishing, and I'm happy to welcome all of you for the session today. Uh, before we begin our session, I just wanted to go over some housekeeping tips uh, with you. Uh, the orange yellow uh, on your screens on the GoToPanel will allow you to open and close the GoToPanel so ha you have a better view of the presentation. You can also change your audio options uh, between your computer and phone. Um, all the microphones are put in mute. Um, all the attendees are uh, have been muted to prevent any disturbances. Uh, please use the question section to post any queries uh, that you have during the session. Uh, the question section is only uh, visible or the, is only visible to the organizers, and all the questions would be answered towards the end of the session. Uh, this presentation will be recorded and everyone will receive a recording of the session as well. Uh, recordings are also made available uh, on YouTube. You can see uh, first two recordings uh, of this uh, of the uh, research mentoring workshop on YouTube as well. Uh, with that, I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Uh, Shanika Ratnashri to initiate the session and introduce our speaker for today. All yours, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's great pleasure for me to welcome you all to the fourth session of the research mentoring workshop as an extension of the writing impactful research program and a post conference engagement of ICMR 2021 conducted by the Faculty of Management Studies, Sabaragama University of Sri Lanka, in collaboration with Emerald Publishing and the Gulf Medical University. Ajman UAE. With great respect, let me first welcome the main speaker of today's session, Professor Amit Shankar, Assistant Professor, Indian Institute of Management, Visaka Partner. Today, he is discussing the topic, handy tips on how to write the findings and discussions of your manuscript. With gratitude, let me also welcome Professor Atulanyanapala, Dean, Faculty of Management Studies, Sabaragamu University of Sri Lanka. Then with gratitude, let me welcome Professor Jayanta and Devasiri, the main coordinator of this workshop series. Ms. Sangeeta Menon, Publishing Relationship Manager, Emerald Publishing, and Professor Sudhirana, Gulf Medical University, UAE. In fact, they contributed a lot in numerous ways for making this mentoring workshop a success. Then with gratitude, let me also welcome Ms. Pooja Trivedi from Emerald Publishing Group. Then, with great respect, I would like to welcome all the distinguished participants from Emerald Publishing, Gulf Medical University, and Sabaragamu University of Sri Lanka. At last, but not least, the respected audience, mainly our academics from all the universities worldwide, senior professors, professors, senior lecturers, lecturers, students and researchers are welcome to the program for making the session lively. Now I would like to introduce the main speaker of today's session and it's a great pleasure for me to announce him. Professor Amit Shankar is an assistant professor in marketing at the Indian Institute of Management Vishaka Patnam in India. Prior to joining IIM Vishaka Patnam, he has he was he was associated with IMT Ghaziabad as assistant professor. He obtained his PhD in marketing from Vinod Gupta School of Management, Indian Institute of Technology, Kangapur. He has conducted several workshops on marketing analytics, SPSS, AMOS, Smart PLS, Advanced Excel, and Process Macro in Premier Institute of India. His research interests are in the areas of retailing, services marketing, and mobile banking. Professor Amit's research has been published in the International Journal of Hospitality Management, Journal of Business Research, Journal of Marketing Management, Journal of Retailing and Consumer Service, Technovation, Journal of Bank Management Marketing, Journal of Strategic Marketing, Australian Marketing Journal, International Journal of Consumer Studies, Journal of Consumer Marketing, 
Australian Journal of Information Systems, Journal of Enterprise Information Management, Journal of Global Information Management, and Marketing Intelligence and the Planning. So, sir, here onwards, the platform is yours. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I am sharing my screen. Once uh, you confirm that my screen is visible to everyone, if you can confirm it, that my yes, screen sir, is visible. We can see your screen, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the Emerald for organizing this session. And definitely, it's great contribution from Emerald side for for researcher for say to to discuss and then to uh, understand that what it takes to publish paper and more more uh, than that publishing the paper how to write the paper and how to contribute to the existing literature so first of all i must congratulate the organizers and uh, thanks him uh, thanks them them uh, to invite me to take a session on and today we will understand how to write uh, findings and discussion of the manuscript I, I went through this whole workshop and they talked about starting from introduction to literature review then research method then discussion and uh, uh, result and then and then implication of that uh, research so they covered all the elements of the research paper i will cover the part which we call discussion and uh, how to write your result and discussion of the paper so i am a professor amit that uh, uh, assistant professor of marketing as uh, Already, you know, in the area, at I am Visakhapatnam. Uh, I I completed my PhD in 2080, and after that, I have published around 49 or 50 papers in some of the journals. Mostly, I I target A star or A journals, but definitely impact factor is something that we still be, uh, be third thing that we are considering. We are mostly following ABDC ranking in India, so we are uh, publishing in ABDC rank journal. Whatever I will tell you, it's, it's not my success which, which is giving you the story. It's all my failure. So whatever failure I receive uh, during this journey of four, five years, I will just talk my failures and it, all the whatever discussion I will make, this will be on the basis of the failures or the rejection which I receive. So always this rejection give you some learning, right? If you are knowing something and if you are getting something, then success will not uh, a good teacher. But rejection always a good teacher so all of, and rejection is the only truth in this world of publishing and world of research so with the help of those rejection i understood some of the concept that i will discuss with you if you have any question you can put into the chat box i will happy to take that question so i'll just start my session here learning objective will talk about that there are two learning objectives we, we will have after this session first how to and how to write the result finding and discussion of the manuscript first i will tell you some of the elements that should be there in this results and discussion session. Then after we will discuss that with the three, I, I have collected four types of paper, qualitative paper, survey-based research paper, experimental paper, and literature review paper. So I have I have four papers with me. I'll discuss with you when you have to write the result and discussion with those four types of paper, how you can do that, that we will understand. So first I will tell you what to do and then we will understand it with practical example that how we can do it and how people are doing it in their journal paper. And then second thing we will understand, which is very much important, what are views of different stakeholders in publishing, be it editor, reviewer, or reader. So that is the second point that we will discuss during this session. Now results section. We'll come to the results section. As you know, the results section is coming after. So whenever you are writing a paper, it starts from title and abstract, then you write introduction, then you write literature review and conceptual background. And after that, you write research method, that what method you apply. After method, what you are doing, you are explaining the findings of the research, that what you find. So result is nothing but representation of the finding of the result. Mostly we are using table and graph for it, table, graph and chart for it but you can uh, write in paragraph too. So we'll understand what it is, but result is nothing, but whatever method you have used to solve a particular research question or, or to answer a particular research question or to examine a particular hypothesis, whatever method you applied, what was the result is coming into that. So that part is called result section, very important section because that gives that, what is your finding, how you are contributing to the existing literature, 
so that is very important because it it this will be only uh, helpful to to contribute to the existing literature as well as providing certain practical implication because both the implications be it theoretical or practical sometimes it's social too sometimes it's methodological too it depend on the findings of the research so that that's research section where you have to explain the finding now i'll explain what you should do when you are writing your result and i'll give you an example also not to worry i'll give you an example so whenever you are starting writing your result don't start with table some of the people what they are doing they start with table that first table second table third table and that's my result or a uh, picture one image one image two image three don't do this start with one paragraph he like that you can write in that uh, result section that we run our model in mos 26 with uh, this uh, criteria and with this normality assumption we use pls to run this analysis and results in say that this demographic is happening or this or not so always start with one paragraph rather than just starting with your table that is the first thing most of people what they are doing result section table one so first you write and set the background that how your result is coming so mostly people what they are doing they are starting with software information or tool information that i had used uh, spss for regression and these are the model and these are the thing which we have explained so one paragraph you start with and that's how you can go with it always use table and figure in the result section so in result section most of the time people are using table and figure you can't you are not supposed to write story here so in result section you put table one table two table three table four but apart from that table there must be some description there for example if you added table of demographic you must explain some of the part which is not there in table so use table and figure but you have must have some description about those table and figure which is not there in that particular table and figure prepare table and figure about yourself some people what they are doing you run mos run spss run starter run use some results are coming just copy and paste don't do this you have to prepare your table and figure for preparing figure you can use uh, anything you can pre uh, prepare the figure in the and microsoft excel microsoft word or microsoft uh, ppt you can use canva if you want if you want to take uh, and go with high interactive figure you can go with canva also some of the softwares are also available to create the figure and table for table all they create in ms word you can use latex too but most of the time we are using ms word or ms excel to create the table for figure you can use either microsoft excel microsoft word or microsoft ppt or you can use some of the software also like uh, canva or some of the software i am not i'm just telling the name i'm not the brand name of these uh, uh, platforms or these software but i'm just telling the name which is coming in my mind so in any of the software you can use caption and references are must there must be some name for the table for example this is table one so you have must give the ref, uh, caption the table one demographic information table two hypothesis testing table three mediation analysis so you must give caption for all the tables and figure figure one conceptual framework so always reader or uh, editor or a uh, reviewer should understand ki, yes this table explaining the result of this particular section that's how you do it then referencing is uh, always must for example i have used some figure one conceptual framework so there must be referencing in my documents when you are writing any of the result there must be thing key the conceptual framework of the study has been provided in figure one so always there must be a reference of those table and figure in the result section sometimes we are uh, explaining some of the reference before also but in the result section you must have in text reference for particular table always it should be at right place so sometimes what will happen last result is first then second and then third then fourth so whenever this uh, when you are submitting the paper you should clearly specify that where my table will come so there are two type of uh, paper we are submitting some of the papers what we are doing when you are submitting the paper you put your table and figure in the manuscript only that's how some people do some people what they are doing they, on some journal what they are asking they are asking for different seat for table and figure 
right? Some journals are giving different set for table, different set for figure. So what you can do, you if you have this option, you have to write manuscript and table and figure document will be different. Then what you can do, you write that table one about here, table two about here, table three about here. And you specify that where it will come and you should follow the sequence. And in same sequence, you put the information in your table and picture section or figure section. So some, if journal is allowing that you can put picture and table into this uh, particular main, main manuscript only, then it's well and good, nothing required. But if some of the journals are allowing that you, you put the figure and table separately, a uh, figure and table separately, in that case, what you can do, you can use this uh, table one insert here, table one, table two, table three, figure one like that. So you highlight the place that way it will come. Always it's crisp and informative. Table is having certain limitation. You can't put table which goes for five pages. It will, readers will lose the interest. So always whenever you are preparing any of the table, information should be crisp. So always give the relevant information and it should be informative. Same time it should be information also. So by me, because of making it crisp, you, uh, crisp, you can't delete some of the relevant information. So make your table crisp but it should be informative at the same time. And I'll give you some example when I will discuss some of the example. Table should be self-explanatory because you will not get, go there to explain the result. By seeing the table and figure, they must understand that it's self uh, what re, uh, authors want to say. So always table and figure should be self-explanatory and that should be visible. It should be interactive. Whenever you are creating any of table and figure, it should always be interactive. It's not interactive. It will be very difficult for you to, or difficult for reader to, to read this and to go through it. Explain relevant finding only. What happens some of the time, what we are doing, we run, for example, I'm giving an example. I am running uh, this regression in SPSS. What will happen? First, ANOVA table will come. Then we have created some normality plot, QQ plot, histogram, these all plot, normality, this normal distribution curve, and then we will get regression result. What people are doing? Copy all the result and paste into my result section. Does not make any sense. Always you find out if you are running regression, the last table is very much important where that we talk about coefficient, their uh, standard error, and their beta value or p value and beta value. That is very much important. So always try to understand here how software will give you many results. You have to identify that what, what result is relevant to me and put that in, in that table. Rather than just copying and pasting all the results given by software, you don't do that. So always explain only, explain means highlight only relevant finding. Connect with research question hypothesis. Whenever, for example, and I will show you the example, not to worry. Once I will done with this result part, Whenever you are getting any hypothesis result, for example, your hypothesis one is to check impact of satisfaction on loyalty. You get some result that P value is less than 0 0.05 and beta is something 0.249. For example, then what you have to do, you have to connect with research question. Our results suggested that satisfaction has significant impact on loyalty, hence H1 is accepted or means hypothesis one is accepted or my research question has been answered by this so always connect your result with the proposed hypothesis or proposed research question whatever you have so whenever you are explaining the result you should explain that how my finding is accepting the uh, hypothesis rejecting the hypothesis or not able to accept the hypothesis not able to reject the hypothesis whatever language you are using or 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 you have to explain that how this, these findings are able to answer my research question, which I made at the first point. Then always talk about word limit. So if I talk about Emerald, Emerald is having one policy that one uh, table and figure considers of 280 words. So whenever you will add one figure or one table, you should con consider it will consider as a 280 words, right? So you, you can't add too many tables. Because once you will add 10 tables, your word limit will go to 2,800 with tables only, tables and figures only. And then but there is word limit for all the journals. If sometimes it's 6,000, sometimes it's 8,000, sometimes it's 10,000. 
so when there is word limit of the journal always consider and uh, that how how many tables or figure you will use considering the word limit of journal because all the journal will giving you the word limit emerald i think it's having 280 uh, words per uh, figure or table it should be visible properly what will happen some of the time you are sending the images from somewhere it's not properly visible if it's not properly visible how it will be how it will tell the story so whenever you are sending any of table or figure it should be very much visible if it's not visible again you use either higher pixel picture or what you can do you can increase your font size to make it consistent right or to make it visible now there is the last point i want to discuss whenever you are submitting a paper definitely you check the similarity analysis some people what they are doing they are checking the similarity analysis of only their writing part main document they are not considering table and figure definitely figure will not come in similarity right figure uh, uh, is all uh, similarity software will not check the uh, we able to check the similarity of the figure or image but table they can so always when you are running and checking the similarity analysis my suggestion you add table also and then you check that what your similarity score is rather than you are just sending the without uh, knowing you are unknowing you are sending uh, checking only similarity of your main manuscript result will come 2% similarity but when journal will check because journal will get one draft where all picture and uh, this image and table will come then they will run it it could come 32% and they will say that your paper we are not just rejecting or you are doing unethical practices you are not supposed to do this your similarity index is way beyond what we are accepting so always try to understand whenever you are putting any of the table figure definitely it's not worrying point because figure they are not considering in the similarity they can't run it figure but it's especially a table into the main manuscript and then check that how much similarity score if you are getting if it's in the journal limit then send it otherwise uh, you are not supposed to send the paper so these are certain do's related to result section then there are some don'ts don'ts is don't repeat the result so there are something in table you are just repeating table 1 is showing this table 1 is showing this 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 if it is visible into the result don't repeat the result so if someone the some result is already explained and self explanatory in the table or figure don't repeat it but yes if something you can't tell in the for example in table you have written beta is this p value is this now how you can explain that this having significant impact with beta impact of 2.45 so that you can write because some of the reader are not aware key three star means what so that you can explain that this is saying that this is having significant positive impact and my h1 is supported that's how people writing so but don't repeat whatever re written in the table you are just repeating the in the result section it's unnecessary you are repeating the thing so 280 words you have already wasted uh, not wasted invested in uh, table and again 280 words you will invest in the writing part does not make any sense don't explain the finding in result section don't try to explain ki why results is coming in this is my logic that happened this happened because for that we have section called finding section so in result section don't explain the findings whatever finding is coming just write the finding so this is the research finding whatever it is it's accepted not accepted significant not significant whatever finding is just write that finding don't highlight all the software output i have already explained don't highlight all the software most of the time you will and again i am telling you you should prepare your picture by yourself always prepare table and figure by yourself sometime what we are doing copying the emos output emos structure we are copying and pasting into here or some the software don't do this always always prepare your own and table and figure some of the table and figure you can't prepare for example if you are getting the some cluster analysis result that they are getting for example bibliometric output that you can't prepare by yourself right because that that's the representation that's the only objective this uh, bibliometric tool is providing you that you can't do but if you are having this output of regression output of statistical modeling output of the anova or t test or some of the doc framework you have created research framework prepare by yourself don't copy and paste it gives it gives very wrong impression on editors that this person it just 
not very sincere about the research and just copy and paste the he or she is not having time to just prepare their conceptual framework by their own because in conceptual framework you have to write hypothesis also which will not possible in case when you are copying from the uh, some of the software where you are running the model so always prepare your own table and figure by taking ref reference from the output of the software whatever software you are using don't hide the findings some of the people what they are doing ki i am i need to explain the model fit i will only explain rmsca or cmn by df so some of the information i will explain some of the information i am hiding because i am not getting the results in it if you will do this what will happen reviewer will ask that question only because they know that if you are hiding certain information there must be some problem so don't hide information if you are getting some model fit less you have always justification for this that there must be some reason that your model fit is not coming into the third cell value and with reference you can justify it, rather than hiding the information don't hide the information always put all the information which is very much relevant to you if you will hide the information you will get the comments on reviewers and editor on that point only because they are very experienced in this by uh, and they are knowing that if you are hiding some result there must be some problem right so don't hide your result don't explain this such method here okay, i will explain that we collected data again from this sample and in india and we did this then that 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 that's happening don't do this again and again i'm telling you don't explain the process how results come some people are saying that they used to give the raw data also then how matrix runs how they created covariance matrix how the covariance matrix converted into the variance matrix and then how they are getting the result some people are writing the machine algorithm or or the algorithm which software using don't do this because the reader is not majorly interested if you are writing method paper definitely you should explain all the steps that how this software work or how this uh, uh, method work but when you are writing the empirical paper or experimental paper you are not supposed to write ki how this anova or how we have calculated t formula of t is nothing but x minus some people what they are doing they will write that we have calculated average variance explained in cr and then give the formula of ab why you are giving everyone is knowing or if they are not knowing they can google and get it right so don't write all the formulas that i got ab ab means this i got r square as r square ka formula is this and i got beta beta formula is this don't do this don't explain the process that how you are getting this result rather than just explain the process never show the raw data in experimental research some of the people are doing they show the raw data does not make any sense if you want to put your raw data you can put into the appendix or you can put into the data inside see yes this is my data if you want to go back you create a link or you can create a cloud just put that in your that in your data set if someone wants to get uh, get in that they can check it but don't put raw data into the, the findings that this is my raw data this is my survey which i have collected these are the different points i got and then after don't do this always always so the findings of the result now some of the suggestion and tips i will give you read the author guidelines before preparing table and figure because each and every journal is having their author guideline ki how much so picture some some of the journal is giving the format that they are looking for jpg image or t some of the looking for tfs image some of the looking for different type of structure they are looking for so always go to order the guidelines first ki how many some type some some journal is having the limitation on table that you can't use more than this sheet table some journal is having limitation on the word limit some journal is having limitation and type of the table and uh, images so you just go through the author's guideline and then you see that what they are saying about table and figure that you can follow that follow the structure structure means whenever you are writing the result first demographic information then if you are doing survey based research then you talk about measurement model means reliability and validity of the skills if you have used and then you talk about uh, this uh, what you can say hypothesis testing result and then if you have mediation modulation advanced level analysis that you can or from some of validated analysis you have you can do that so always follow the sequence and structure of the result always use table and figure i have already explained 
always write your uh, result in past tense because you have already did it right so my table saying that it has significant impact on this so always write it uh, in past tense and active voice rather than passive voice so these are uh, two things always take care when you are writing the result but it it again very general to general some some journalists prefer that you should write result in passive voice then you can follow that but most of the journals i'm saying that your finding should be on results should be in the past tense and it should be in active voice but this is not a hard and fast thing but this is advisable that you should do this always write the finding small sentence rather than writing full paragraph so one sentence start with one and all result in one line only and end of the day thank you don't go with this just write in small small sentences and your findings should be consistent with what you are getting it so if consistency must, must be there with with your uh, your result with your so what have research question you have and what hypothesis you have how you uh, collected the data and what was your method and then accordingly you understand that how how you able to uh, get this result so you connect this thing with consistency that's how it works now important question and then i'll go for some practical uh, visualization that how you should write the results editor reviewer and reader when we talk about findings of the study in terms of table and figure most of the editors are seeing the structure of the result it means table is in the same format or not how many tables are there results are clearly visible or not picture is clear or figure is clearly visible or not these are the things which editor is mostly looking so it editors view on the finding generally is that finding all the relevant findings are there or not because i, I can tell you most of the time editors are receiving many papers so they have and uh, recently i have i am in talk with some of the editors and they are saying that we have very limited amount of time around 3 to 30 minutes to check that this paper should go for review or not the editor can't spend whole 3 day or 4 day to just check that this this will go for review or not so they have limited time to decide that this journal will go for this paper will go for review or not so what they are seeing they are seeing that all relevant results are there or not that is one thing then they are checking that format is with the journal or or other guidelines or not how many figures are there how many tables are there tables are visible or not figures are visible or not they are at placed or not and their references are given or not so in finding section and result section they just connect that these are the hypothesis these are the result these results are sufficient enough to to support the finding or not that's it so whatever table and figure you are putting in that are suffice enough to claim your uh, examine or test your hypothesis that's the editor view if the editor spend very uh, less time on it reviewers spend significant amount of time because he or she wants to check that how you get the result interpretation is right or not your hypothesis is inconsistent with your findings or not so how you are getting the findings they are sometimes they are interested in data also so they may might ask data set for you so some of the time in the division state they might ask ki can you share the, your raw data with us because i am not seeing this there are some i have some confusion into it so reviewer is spending significant amount of time into the findings and results because uh, definitely uh, we are getting whenever we are getting we are getting review invitation we are getting one month to two months so we reviewer is taking minutely and they are checking mostly what they are checking they are checking that is there any facet sometimes what people are doing um, that your result is not consistent what it should be so you are getting some finding satisfaction has no impact on loyalty so it will open uh, the eyebrow of this reviewer will like anything what happened satisfaction and there must be something that you should explain logically or there must be something so they are very particular and they are very uh, minutely checking the uh, this result section and finding section of the study then again reader for reader again it's like editor for reader how much interactive it is that is making more sense so readers is also saying ki by seeing the table only i got table one i got all the results i need not to read the whole finding section this figure one self explanatory to this so that is the re uh, reader reader wants first of all 
figures and tables because figures and tables are telling a story in better manner rather than uh, content and very few people are fond of writing content they are always uh, going for interactive media that's why interactive media play important role to engage with the customer so they whenever you are using this figure and image they are looking for figure and image to just understand that what story so in one image or one figure of conceptual framework will tell all the story what you want to do so always review a reader thinks that you use table and figure in interactive manner and it should be self -based. these are the three you are having so you have to consider the editors view also reviewers view also and readers view also so as per my experience editor and reader are same so editor is only seeing how it will look to the reader how how this paper will contribute to the reader how many how how it, it will enhance the knowledge of the reader so editors view is always thinking of reader reviewers are thinking the paper quality they are not worrying that how it will be visible and some of the time they are not worrying that how it will be uh, suitable to the reader and how it will be working they are mostly focusing on the quality of the findings and quality of the paper but editor view is always that also they are also finding that uh, they are also taking care of the find, uh, quality of the paper i am not denying that but there also one view is that how reader will look like it how it contribute because end of the day readership of the journal is also play important role and if readership will increase your citation will increase when will which is the function of uh, your impact factor and your visibility of the journal so always they are taking of the reader view so reader and editor are one and the same platform for me and it's my personal view and reviewer is something which defines the quality of the paper most of the time but sometimes editor also have some take on this now this is about this i will show you some of the paper so as i suggested you i will show you three or four types of paper which way i am having uh in the discussion section that how it goes and this key how to write the result first i will talk about survey based research so i'll explain most of the time my paper only because i know this paper so this is the paper it's published in technovision recently i'll take you directly to the result section this is visible uh, to everyone right so here i have started writing my just give me one second i'm making it 100 percent so this is my methodology after the methodology i have discussed about data analysis and method can you see results results may nowadays uh, a reviewer is always asking for two things multi community and common method bias if you are doing for survey with research so we started with common method bias and multi community we check that our data is having common method bias and multi community or not then we talk about control variable we are having that and then after the, after this uh, multi community and common method bias you should talk about measurement model measurement model means your reliability and validity of the scheme so that is the second thing right and we have given this table to study measures and items of the factor loading means this is measurement model and we have highlighted also can you see here table two so the factor loading of all were significant this information is not there right table two shows that factor loading of all customers were significant and above 0.7 so that information is there but they can't check one by one so some of the crisp information we have taken from it and we provide into here then control variable and hypothesis testing to so a structure model we have given we have given that how to write the structure model then moderation analysis can you see table three validity and reliability analysis where we talk about crav we talk about uh, this uh, foreign liquor method of uh, this uh, comparison then we show the results also in this form so here we had two options either you can show this hypothesis testing result in the form of table Okay, this is having this this is having this this is having those path result and this or you have option that you can use into the table so this is a, a figure this is clearly visible okay, this is having significant this is having significant this is my spot and i have prepared by myself rather than trusting on the on the website or software itself. so i have prepared myself all the table i have prepared my myself rather than going this you got my point right? this table is self-explanatory or not this is my variable this is the source which i have taken these are the item i have used this is my factor loading this is me this is standard 
self explanatory no need to tell anything to the reader now can you see this self explanatory triple star significant i have written also triple star means p is this p is this if the path is this this is significant if path is dot line it's not significant so it's clearly visible to the reader in this form and then after i write i have written the moderation analysis so in case of survey based research primary survey based research especially management research i am talking about you start with your measurement table some of the people give the information of demographic also that also you can give you start with first table should be your demographic table second to be table should be reliability and validity which we call cfa result measurement scale third table should be your hypothesis uh, this uh, discriminatory validity result fourth table should be hypothesis which you can replace by this uh, figure also and fifth table should be moderation mediation if you are using if you are not use that's perfectly fine that's how it goes and always follow this sequence when you are writing a result section that's how it goes this is about survey based research primary survey based research we are doing now if you are going with excuse me one second if you are writing any experimental research so this is the experiment which i did on uh, csr so see the experiment experimental research finding will be very less so experimental research mostly they talk about the setting of the experiment is something that methodology play important role in segmentation in experimental research rather than finding so in findings what you have to explain whenever you are writing the finding of ex uh, this experimental research first thing which is very much important is manipulation check means how you check that this particular environment is suitable for uh, and you it's uh, similar to the actual environment so always discuss with this manipulation check start with manipulation check and then you start with hypothesis testing whatever you use mencova and cova whatever you use, and then you can write the figure and so this is my table which i have used that's all in the experimental session also in fact experimental paper you will have less table because most of the time we are using either chi square and know about teachers nowadays some people are using this process micro and structure regression modeling too but in pure research definitely field research and pure research in uh quasi research we are using this uh our scenario based research we are using this uh structure regression modeling and process macro in case of pure research still we are doing on ANOVA, manova mancova and coba and uh, sky square and teachers so that's why their result section is not uh that's something that you should very extreme the very little section but manipulation check is very much important sometimes people are doing robustness checking also so post uh, analysis that also you can add if you have now we'll talk about qualitative study this is qualitative study some of the qualitative study i will talk about so in qualitative study how you should write you should write like this so i'll go to the qualitative study finding in the qualitative standing uh, finding first you write a table so in quality so what you are taking you are taking certain interview after taking so these are the interview you have taken after taking the interview this is demographic information right this is demographic information that what you are uh, respondents are and then whatever keywords you are getting and how you aggregated the keywords and what are the theme you are getting this table is very much important and after that nothing is required in uh, this table if you have used some tools and techniques uh, like uh, if you have used text mining you can write that result also if you are getting the table one because now these people are doing uh, qualitative analysis and qualitative regression analysis qualitative discriminant analysis or qualitative uh, this uh, cluster analysis that result you can write but other than that this is perfectly fine so most of the time what you have to write in a qualitative study one demographic information second how you are getting this theme that's the information you must have fourth information when you are writing slr paper so when you are writing slr paper then what you have to write in the disc uh, in this finding in this finding whatever approach you are approaching so in the slr paper your finding will start from methodology also so after methodology can you see your your finding will start after just give me one second So uh, you you can in the finding 
and in most of the slr paper we are using finding and discussion together most of the time but in slr what finding you have what are the journal you have accepted uh, consider in this more cited paper then country whatever slr you are doing you have to put all the tables here and then you have to explain this if you have used for example here i have used content analysis using lexicometric analysis so that's the result of the similarity analysis then result of this uh, dendrogram or the cluster we got so you explain the result but in uh, uh, slr study your finding started in the after introduction section only or little bit conceptual background because in slr you will have less hypothesis you are not coming with any hypothesis right so most of the time your finding will start with the starting point also and all finding you will discuss one by one that's all you do so that's how this slr finding people are now we will go with uh, discussion part i will explain the discussion part and that's a bit easy and then we'll go with for question and answer if you are having it so when we talk about discussion part what is discussion so discussion is a storytelling of the finding what happened in the discussion part key whatever finding you have received how you can tell a story with that data i have told you in the result section don't explain the result here in discussion section you have to explain the result means you have to tell a story with the help of result what you are getting highlight major findings whatever major findings of the research that you highlighted here but not in form form of beta in term of anything you have highlight your research discussion you discuss your result rather than you again repeat the result section some people what they are doing they are repeating it don't repeat the result again in discussion section meaning and importance of the finding we explain that this is my finding what what do you mean by it to so this is saying this it means that satisfaction play important role when it talk when it comes to the uh, consumer engagement or consumer engagement play important role when it comes to the satisfaction and validity and like that so you explain the meaning of the result but what meaning this is having and how this result is very much important for practitioner and for the for this academy series so always explain the meaning and importance of the finding for in the in the in the terms of uh, uh, practical world as well as theoretical world relate the finding with existing data very important point very important point whenever you are getting getting a result you have to write ki our result suggested that satisfaction or you can write like that inconsistent with the previous finding give the citation robert et al 2005 i am given example or sankar et al 2021 so it's uh, consistent with the previous finding our result suggested that satisfaction in in fact significant impact on validity it means this and this will helpful and this is the new finding which we are getting that's how you have to discuss each and every result whatever you are getting sometimes it could be contradictory result also possible in the literature is saying that it should be positive but in your case you are getting negative so how you will write you will write in contradiction with the finding of the existing literature again give the citation that sankar et al 2022 my study finding says that this is having this impact and because of this it's happening so always identify and relate the finding with the existing literature that is there a contradiction in is, is there any 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 support so either inconsistent of the previous finding or in contradiction of the previous finding both will work always close the loop in this section we have to close the loop this was my research question this was my finding this is my discussion then this how that's how so you started with one problem then you set some hypothesis you run some of the analysis and after that you are closing the loop by explaining that how this uh, this is very much important in case of particular context and in case of this literature and practical world so that's how so discussion part is nothing but you are telling a story with the help of finding keeping the mind keeping in the mind that you have to explain this with the support of the existing literature there are some do's explain all the hypothesis either accepted and rejected or not accepted or supported not supported some people what they are doing they are only explaining the supported hypothesis they are not discussing the important point is to discuss the 
rejected hypothesis because that is something that you are contributing also right because if something is rejected there must be some interesting story behind it right you have to tell that story that why you are hypothesis being, being rejected if your hypothesis being selected definitely you should just give that in line with the previous finding our hypothesis sub supported and because of this reason but if it's rejected then you have to give proper logic for it that why it's happening in your case it existing literature is saying that it's supported that's why you have said the hypothesis right because whenever you are writing your hypothesis you are writing your hypothesis on the basis of the previous support previous study support so previous studies are suggesting that x should have significant impact on y your context not so that is something interesting what is great in your context what is great in your sample so you explain that always explain accepted as well rejected hypothesis some people what they are doing they only explain uh, uh, accepted hypothesis i don't know why don't do this support contradict finding of the literature that i have told you he always provides support from the previous finding that how it so much support you are getting and always give logic reason of the finding he why what why this finding is coming in if i am getting this finding why this finding is coming in? there are some rules for the writing discussion too he don't repeat the result same result what you have written don't repeat discussion section you have to understand and tell the story and three things you have to explain i have already told you the support of the existing literature that is first thing second thing you should explain that uh, uh, why this what is the meaning of this result and third thing you have to uh, uh, explain that how this this results are uh, important for the practical world and limited uh, this academic world don't over interpretation over interpretation is something that is done so people are interpreting whichever not is there so over interpretation is not required something whatever is there just explain that one thing some people are writing one sentence four times six times times seven times same thing so i got this because of this i got this result because of the same reason i got this because of the same reason so over interpretation is not required unwarranted especially or sometimes what they are doing uh, they are making a speculation it could happen because of this don't escape escape lead something so speculation will not work so in case of that you have to give key this result is coming because of this reason and there you give reference right so for example my some hypothesis got rejected i am saying my result is coming like this because of this reason and give reference rather than making a, a speculation it could happen that my they, when i collected the data people did not read the question in proper manner that's why it could happen i'm not sure about what's happened don't make any speculation in it you just get solid reasoning for it with references right that's how it goes exaggerating the result that's our habit this research is the world changing research now i will change the world uh, whole world with this research exaggerate the result you are getting beta is 0.1 and you are saying that it's a very significant impact if they will do it then company will do it their their sales will increase by many fold and that will happen this is very good research, important finding we got and this will contribute to the existing literature and this is novel finding don't exaggerate the result whatever you are getting that explain that only and superficial sometimes we are doing some superficial discussion my research result is coming something different i am giving the importance something different discussing something very different so some people are superficially discussing this is my importance of the study and this is i am getting but result is saying something different so there must be correlation between higher correlation between your results and finding section uh, results and discussion section that whatever result you are getting just explain that rather than writing superficial and most of the time reviewer will comment it that your finding is superficial no it's not suitable so two thing you always remember your reviewer will ask that it's how your result in inconsistent and contradiction with existing literature second what is the reasoning for it and how with this result is important so these two thing you always try to understand editors if you are reader you again same point editor is again not they will just see the structure that they have given the inconsistent with previous finding or not they follow the structure or not because some of journal is having i will tell you one thing some journal is having performa that discussion and some people are writing that also discussion conclusion limitation implication in one column so some of the paper what they are writing discussion conclusion implication or some people are using limitation also 
so they combine all the six some of the journals you have discussion section then uh, implication section then limitation and conclusion that's how it goes so every journal is having different style of writing discussion so you follow that journal and editor is seeing that only that you are following the structure that they are giving or not and how you are discussing the research in better manner now reviewers they are very particular about it that whatever whatever logic you are giving that makes some sense or not so that's how it will help the reviewer so reviewer also ch always check that whatever logic you are giving for your result be it supported or rejected or not supported your logic is valid or not your logic should not be superficial and your importance of the findings should be explained in very right manner so they are seeing this always they are worrying about it that what is the logical reason and whatever logical reason you are giving there must be some valid support for it that this this is happening and that is happening reader again discussion point they want to check that what how they can how how what because sometimes some, some time you are getting technical result so reader view is that i want to understand in discussion section that this technicality you are breaking in with the words in terms of story so readers is again interested in the story that what story your result which is very much technical i am not able to understand your figure i am not understand your table because it's too confusing or you have too many tables so in discussion section i will get the gist of this findings that what my finding is saying and again they will give some of the logical reasoning which enhance their understanding of the con uh, concept and understanding of the literature so that that's how this is readers for readers also discussion very much important but again discussion section is the next to result so result if your result section is good and your findings are uh, you have explained in better manner result discussion will follow that and that's how this data reviewers and uh, readers are seeing it now we'll give you some of some of the example and then we will open for floor for question and answer so if i i will see this i'll explain again survey based research so you can can you see the survey based research in survey based research we talk about what we start with discussion so here is our discussion if this 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 then we have said that if this if if finding that aligns with the previous study will about support one confirms our activities and this 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 we have given the reasoning with the support again then again next hypothesis how this is supported with the five previous finding so we explain with the research question and hypothesis part and every time we are giving the logic can you see in contrast four and five we stand supported in confirming the significance of positive association with trans and this, this these findings are consistent with this 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 now we have explained non supported hypothesis to right just see next while 8c and 8d stand supported 8a and 8b do not support for 8c demonstrate that number of years uses same interval this 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 and we have given the logic for this because it's not supported so i have given logic for this we have given logic for this that how it goes and how it works you got my point or not so i have explained all i never uh, we never uh, write somewhere that uh, what what the beta and what beta goes and what is the everything method i just explained that result is coming this with consistent or inconsistent of the finding and what was the reason for this can you see they have given that to suppose we find that our positive association this 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 tend order food they did not originally intend to order especially if those items offer good value for money so let's support for this positive association between left to be rotating and rotating with center consumer will establish rotating in a strong this means i have given some of the logic because if you are not familiar with the context it will not make sense to you but uh, i am giving some logic into it then now we'll go to the experiment paper again same in discussion i have discussed the result and see the key from how these findings are consistent and this with this never and this 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 and how it subject to then in qualitative study discussion is very much important so whatever theme you are getting you have to discuss the theme with some of the statement which you got during interview focus group or the qualitative study so in discussion what we are doing if these are the theme so first theme is this and now you explain that why i am considering this as an important theme second theme is this and you have to give the 
supporting document over there and you can't give the support because it's explanatory in nature so most of the time you could not able to find consistency or inconsistency so what you will do you are seeing whatever statement you got from your uh what you can say uh, paper you you can do that in slr discussion section i have told you is going go by go with uh result section so result and discussion go together one more thing i want to tell you sometimes you are going for multi-study so in multi-study you should discuss the result again and again so this this was the multi-study which we have uh, published recently so the for all the study for example this is my study number one design sample analysis and here i am discussing the result so i discuss the result for study one then go to study two explain the result i'm discussed so you have to discuss all the result in end of the day you overall discussion you are making generic discussion in end of the session right generic discussion not at the month but if you have multi-study research you explain the result and finding of the study one and discuss it then study two start with what your study is and then you explain it and that's how it goes that's how you can go with discussion of multi-study paper you have a multi-study paper you can go like this that's how people used to write the discussion section of of their now i will end my session here if you have any question any queries and uh, then i am open for all the question inquiries you are having and you can put into the chat box i'm just stop sharing my screen so uh, you if some question is coming i am open for all the questions whatever it is thank yes. you dr amit uh, we have a lot of questions for you to answer in fact so I, i'll try and go through them uh, you know of course we do have some time for it so hopefully we'll be able to cover them all so the first question is if my data is normalized before analysis do i need to denormalize in this se results section especially around mean and confidence intervals this is fine using log or inverse function but challenging using box cox or johnson transformation so uh, you are uh, the, the, uh, this question is a bit technical so this author or this question whoever asked the question want to understand that if my data is normal or non normal it should be non normal how we normalize it and how to report the result so on the basis of your normality of the data right your analysis thing will be changed for example if i have non normal data i will go with most of the time non parametric test or or we will use some partial least square method rather than this covariance based method that is one thing second thing you can take either log you can standardize it you can take the factor score but you have to report it simple thing that keep when you are writing so you add one section in your result called normality and you explain that my data was non normal because of this reason we make it normal and that's how we analyze it or my data is non normal that's why i am using this a specific tool to to get the finding so for my suggestion to you if you have this non normal data or normal data which is, should not be then you explain one section so add one section in the result as i have showed you that i have had multi conality and common method bias you add one section there called normality and explain this normality issue and how we have tackled the normality that's how it goes that will be my suggestion yes. okay thank you very much uh, the next question is is plagiarism checked for references also no the references plagiarism check is not allowed so whenever you are sending your paper and checking your similarity just remove the references because if you go for references it will come 40% to 60% because all references will be definitely copy some use somewhere the references don't not make any sense my point was that that when you are using table or figure you can't put because figure people on uh, this uh, software will not capture but when you are using any of the table in your uh, result just put that when you are running the similarity analysis because some of the time your table is having too much similarity which will contribute to your paper and your similarity report and the journal similarity report will be very much different so put table into that rather than rather than you are putting references you should not put the size answer is that yes. 
Thank you. Uh, the next question is, what is the difference between result and discussion? I think you've already addressed this, but would you like to take this one? So result, 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 just you saw what software give you as the output. So whatever your output is in terms of technical terms, in terms of beta, in terms of SC, in terms of uh, P value and T value, some of the relevant information that you want to give. So result means you writing, just finding whatever you are getting from software. Discussion, you have to tell story that this is the result I am getting. Why I am getting this result? Is this result is consistent with previous finding? And what is the importance of this? So these are the three things we are writing. So in result section, you are just writing the result, irrespective of it's significant or not, whatever it is. But in discussion section, you are explaining the story behind this result. That is the difference between result and discussion. Right. So the next question is, how exactly can we differentiate between don't explain the findings and don't hide the findings? Don't explain all the findings. That was my point. Ki if you are, uh, I will tell you the things. Ki when you are run EFA analysis, you will get first KMO table, then first matrix, then rotation matrix, then cumulative value, then you will get some of the test result. Don't put all the result. That that's my point. But don't hide some of the relevant information, like you are not showing the p-value or you are not showing that what is the cumulative percentage they are explaining. So my point is that all relevant values should be there, but unnecessary table and findings should not be there. That is the difference. If there are software will give you many findings, definitely it's not relevant for your study and it's relevant to your context, right? And it's not relevant to your reader. So you have to identify which finding is relevant enough and crisp enough to give the information. So don't use unnecessary finding. So, but don't hide some of the relevant findings. That that's that's that that's right. right. So the next question is: in a qualitative study, is there a difference between results and findings, or is it finding is findings the correct terminology to use? They, they depends on the uh, uh, author to author. Some people are using only finding. They are not going for discussion. So they are using only finding word. But if you will take my view, what we are doing in finding section, we are writing that how we emerge with the theme. What are the demographic information which we have interviewed? So if we have interviewed 12 person from where they are coming in, what their demographic is, or we have taken the focus group, what their demographic profile of those people or my sample profile. That one thing we are writing and secondly, sometimes we are using some tool also text mining tool. So the result we are getting, we are getting some of the factor score we are also getting nowadays or you have to, you did it manually. So you are getting some of the uh, keyword then sub theme and theme that you should explain at the finding and after that you discuss the finding, but this can go same similar also that you write the finding and then you can explain the finding so that that both are right there is no harm in explaining finding again and or, or other way around that you already have different sections of finding and discussion both will work great so the next question is uh please explain the difference between theoretical framework and conceptual framework second how to contribute theoretically in any research model so the first question you have asked is related to previous session, which we, you have organized related to how to conceptual development in the literature review. That was the part. So there is no it's two terminology in which you are using theoretical. I am telling you, if I, if you can ask me to differentiate it, I will say that when you have ex come up with some framework without using theory, existing theory, that something I am getting from qualitative study that you can see conceptual framework. When you want to check certain test, a certain theory, for example, I want to check how TPB or theory of plant behavior or time is working in particular context, that we call theoretical framework. But there is not much difference if you are writing conceptual framework or theoretical framework. Things are more or less same. That's not any hard and fast rule for that. Coming to your second question, how to make theoretical contribution? Again, your next session will be on implication. If I'm uh, right, there you will understand. But only thing he we are writing in discussion section key how this finding is very much important and we will not discuss that how it will contribute to the literature that is one thing second thing your selection of the variable 
is some time or selection of the topic is contributing to the theory so when we talk about the academic implication and theoretical implication it's mostly depend on what are the constructs you are using in your model or conceptual framework and second thing what is your research problem which you want to solve if your research problem is unique your research problem is novel your research problem is very much different from what did not someone did not think of checking that is something that everyone is looking for and that is the major contribution rather than anything but in next session you will get more answer uh, better answer than this thank you uh, the next one is a request rather than a question and we received it from quite a few attendees they're requesting if you could share the pdf or the papers you're discussing for future reference uh, PDF of the paper, I can't share that. That's the limitation. I can share the title with you. I will share the title with you. You can share with the participants. Definitely, we are not supposed to share the papers. That is the ethical guidelines we need to follow. So, I, I will share the title of the paper for future reference. People can download from their session if they are having. PDF, we can't share. And we know the limitation that uh, we are not supposed to share the PDF of the paper because it should be accessed to the institute. So, I will share the a link and the uh, paper title rather than video that i will say yes, for the reference thank you so much uh, the next question is when to use chi t square for testing hypothesis uh that's very good question so when they, we have when it, it definitely chi square test we are using in case of experimental research when your input variable and output variable both are non-metric when i'm saying non-metric it means your data nature is either your data is ordinal in nature or nominal in nature so when your both input variable and output variable are non-metric data means either nominal or ordinal in this case innova can't work because for innova output should be always uh, this uh, continuous data which is very interval in this you so for example if you have in certain situation where input variable is all, also ordinal or nominal output variable is also on, or, an ordinal and nominal the method which you are using called chi square for example i'll give you an example i want to check the level of interactivity on purchase decision so level of interactivity i have two level interactive website in interactive website this is nominal scale right so we have interactive interactive nominal scale and purchase decision yes or no so in this case both the data set and both the data is having non metric in nature right so in that case you should use chi square but if you have collected the output data purchase intention in terms of one to five scale then we, you can go with t test or you know that how their purchase intention vary on the basis of uh, this uh, interactivity level of the website so that's how chi square people are using when you have both input and output data set are nominal or ordinal in nature means non metric or non continuous in nature that is the right so the next question is uh, please explain the difference between thematic analysis and content analysis thematic analysis what we are doing content analysis there is a huge difference in thematic analysis and content analysis thematic analysis is what we are doing we are taking certain interview we are doing certain text mining we are doing certain qualitative study it could be observation ethnography ethnography case study or focus group discussion interview or observation you use certain qualitative technique after that you get some of the keywords on the similarity of the basis of the keywords you come up with certain theme which is very relevant for your study that we call thematic study so you are exploring certain theme of a particular phenomena for example i want to explore what are different themes which contributes to the emergence of a, a blockchain technology so for that i will take certain interview i will get certain keyword on the basis of keyword i will get certain theme now in content analysis is the method which we are using so what we will do for example i am getting some of the interview i will run those interview in either some of the software called atlas ti or nvivo or r and i will get this so in content analysis whatever content in thematic analysis our job is to explain the theme with the help of keyword in content analysis our job is to just get the keyword that what are keyword people are talking again and again so in thematic analysis our objective is to get the theme using can you can you can use content analysis also right content analysis or text mining is a method so you can use content analysis or any of the method to emerge and explain the theme in case of this content analysis our objective to get certain keywords 
So I'm not worrying about theme. I'm worrying about what are the keywords that people are talking about. So what we are doing, we are running whole content on one software. They will throw that which are the word coming again and again on the basis of their frequency. And that will be my objective. Okay, these are the word that people are talking. But if you want to take it keyword and want to on the basis of this keyword, you want to create certain themes and sub themes, then it will become thematic. That's how there is a difference between content and analysis and thematic. Uh, thank you. So the next question is, how would how could the findings and this what would the findings and discussion look like for review from previous study for the manuscript? Okay, so in the SLR paper, what findings we are getting? So it depends on different method we are following. Either you are following uh, a TCCM framework or TCC framework, or we have different method has been given for doing uh, OW framework. So we have different method for doing SLR. In SLR, my suggestion is that, if for example, you see that how many papers have been published in that phenomena, use that table and discuss the result. What are different theory has been used? Use that table, discuss the result. So discussion and result will go side by side. So mostly what in SLR, what we are using, if you will follow TCCM framework we are following, you should explain what our theory has been used, what was the con context, what will be the characteristics, and what are the method has been used. But apart from that, there are some people who are using key, how many papers has been published, what are the citation, most influential author, some people are using bibliometric also to understand the citation data, that how citation evolved. Method could be very much different, but major information that someone is looking for in SLR study. One thing, what was the context, different context of the particular phenomena. Second, what is the characteristics of the phenomena. Third, uh, what is theory has been used. Fourth, what are the method people are using. Fifth, very much important point, you should give a conceptual framework based on your finding. And sixth, which is most important part of SLR paper, future research direction. What future research direction you want to give based on the uh, theory and whatever existing literature review you did? So, that is the important point that you should go when we talk about result and discussion that will go side by side in case of SLR that I have explained in the way with the help of information. Thank you. So, the next question is sometimes it is not possible to deduce why I'm getting inconsistent results. I may have a clue, but nothing that is a logical explanation especially so for data that spans 20 years how should an author document this in the paper uh, first thing i will tell you so, so most of the time we are saying that our finding is very unique and out of the blue it's nothing happened we have so many research papers are there there must be some thread somewhere that is my first answer you have to find the thread definitely you will not find the exact finding in the in contradiction in line with the previous study but there must be some thread first thing first Second thing, you, if I am getting something very uh, unexpected result, there must be some reason for it. It could be reason of sampling. If you are getting unexpected find, there is two reasons. One reason it could be that you did the wrong analysis that where you are getting out of the blue finding, or there must be some interesting story behind it. So when you are getting unexpected finding, what we are doing especially, we are checking it twice. That the method, the data which we have used, that was the same nature of the data was okay or not. The, is there any, uh, and, they, and then if I'm getting an unexpected finding, we check all the biases, either it's sample selection bias or method selection bias or measurement bias or sampling bias or population selection framing bias. So now once I'm getting the some unexpected finding, first thing I'm checking, you can't blame others, right? Or it's a bit difficult to justify yourself. So first you check yourself that is there any bias in any of the place. If bias is not coming, you see the data structure. You will find some of the interesting story into this. Because of this reason, I'm getting this study. So my suggestion to you, first of the thing, you will get some of the threads somewhere because we have huge literature for any of the topic. You tell me the topic, there are thousands of paper available. So you can't say that this topic is very much new and out of the blue. That is one thing. Sometimes or if, uh, what I think I, if I am getting guess it, uh, he or she is from finance and talks about the 20 years data, means time series data, he or she is talking about that, how results are changing, because things have been changed drastically and time play important role to it. In that case, you see your different uh, biases, you can check different uh, 
data preparation tool like you can check autocorrelation, hydrostaticity, or multicollinearity, or or common method bias, or different different stationarity of the data set. You you can check all these things. If again if it's coming in, you have to justify with the logic, and that will be the crucial finding. If you are again able to challenge some of the existing theory, that is the something that academic world is looking for. That you are challenging existing theory with super data form and the established data. So that that will. Okay. So the next question is, uh, the author wants to ask if you are doing a research and in literature there are a few studies that analyze those variables. How can we align our results with other studies? Is it important to do so? And uh, the person adds that usually in research paper, it is mentioned that our results are in alignment or in contrast with an, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So what happened? Uh, so question, this question is very valid. What happened? The apprehension of that, when I will write that this trust is having significant effect on validity, and I will give the references, it will say that this already been examined, that's why you are examining. That's the apprehension people is having. Even I will give this key nine with the uh, previous study, but we are giving the reference from other context, right? So I did this study in food delivery context. In some other context in previously years, this relationship has been examined. Any of the relationship, and you are not getting any relationship out of the blue, right? When you are doing survey based research or experimental research, you are writing hypothesis. And when you are writing hypothesis, you are giving the logic. Uh, references, right? You are giving the references that I have taken thread from some different study. So you have that thread available with you. Why journal is looking for this uh, ref contradiction and uh, uh, this key in line with the result? Because they don't want to give any of the finding which is not based on certain theory on existing literature. Because once you will get give some of the finding which is very much out of the blue, what you are doing. Just be with me and try to understand. You are doing some study on a particular sample and you are coming with and predicting for the population. What will happen now? You got something out of blue and you write it without any contradiction and uh, uh, this alignment with the previous finding. This out of blue finding will be now set a precedent. Yes or no? Next people will try to use it. If that paper got it, so that so you are setting a precedent without getting the reference from the existing literature and theory. That's why they have this fear that there will be some finding and then their finding will be huge. So everyone will get some different finding and people will confuse that what is the actual thing that we should follow. That's why journal is very much interested that your finding is in line or contrast with the previous finding. Or not. That's why it's important because it will be our objective to contribute to existing literature and theory. That is the research world is doing. We are not here to do practical research to solve a particular problem. Our objective is to contribute to existing theory and the literature. That's why alignment and contrast is always required. You take the example from other context and you can edit. If this I did it, check it in other context, it has been happening. So that uh, alignment you can give. Uh, thank you. I think we're uh, running a little short of time. So I'll try and cover as many questions as I can. So the next question is, uh, could you please help me understand if past research supports or contradicts our findings for all the hypothesis, then what will be the novelty of our research? Because past research has already tested those hypotheses. Okay, so when you are doing uh, survey based research, you are writing your hypothesis in your hypothesis. Definitely you are taking thread from that those paper. The only thing you can write that key, this should not from your context, right? I am doing this study in particular context called mobile banking. Someone has examined this relationship in a case of mobile uh, retailing. I am not sure that is applicable in particular case. That's why I'm coming with this hypothesis. So if you are getting this uh, other context alignment, that will work. And that's how it's novel. I'm telling you when in survey based research, nothing is coming out of the blue. If you are doing mixed method research or theory developed research, then you are getting something out of blue. Then there is not required when you are doing the and I told you when you are going for qualitative study, this alignment is not required. You have to give the what interviewer are saying. That's why you are coming up with. But in case of survey research, you are coming with some hypothesis and you want to check it in particular setting. So that's why you say give the alignment from the previous context. This context, no one is check, and that's how this is the contribution. Very easy to do, and people are doing it.
Perfect. So the next question is, does logical reasoning in justifying rejected hypothesis always need to be supported by references? Not all. It should be some supported by, according to me, it should supported by, because we all human beings also have different biases, right? I have my own thinking, uh, Sangeeta have different thinking of the same, 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 it's all about you. So I am seeing X, Sangeeta is seeing Y. So how I will trust that your thinking is aligned with the thinking of the reader of whole universe. That's why if you are giving something, for example, I have given the logic because of this reason happening. Reviewer may counter attack it. No, 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 this is not happening like that. This could be your personal thinking. But when you give the logical validation or citation, reviewer understand, oh, yes, this had theoretically already been proved. So whatever reasoning he or she is giving, that is perfectly fine. So you are saving, safeguard yourself rather than anything. When you are giving the references for your logic, you will get less question. If you are just giving the logic, it, 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 it will become debate, right? When you will give the logic, everyone has their own logic and they can contradict and contradict it. So it will be very difficult and risky for you. That's why I suggested that give some references to safeguard yourself. Right. So the next question is a little lengthy one. Uh, so the author is asking that since they are working on a literature review paper right now and based on a systematic literature search, they have found 100 papers that are relevant. Now they have to present these 100 papers in a table, but the table will go to at least 10 pages. Is it necessary to present all the papers in, in the study or can they skip it and put necessary findings in the paper? Uh, yeah, there are two options. Either you can skip it if reviewer and editor will ask you to submit the paper detail. Second option that we are doing, we are creating appendix. So you create appendix, full detail of all the papers in the appendix. Now it's new method that we are using. Appendix also comes under uh, Turnitin or this uh, uh, IoT ticket or stability software. So what we are doing, we are creating a link. So you put your all paper detail in some of the uh, this uh, either one CR or Google Drive, you put all information with there and give the link. If this is the link of all the paper. If anyone interested, can click there and go to them. So there are two options. Either you can put into the appendix or you can create with the link, create a Google form, put all the paper information. Only paper information, don't put paper because you're not supposed to share the paper. So only paper information in form of table and just that's how you can do it. So appendix or the link of that paper will go up. Uh, putting all the paper into the table. Right. Uh, and the next question is, which software is preferable to use for analysis? Does it have an impact on paper acceptance? Not necessary. If you run an analysis in uh, Microsoft Excel, if you run regression in Microsoft Excel R or SPSS or Starter, you, you, the result will be always same. So they are not looking for some of the thing, but yes, they are looking for that software which you are using is widely used or not. You say that I use software called Amit and no one is knowing that what Amit is doing. They are not knowing their algorithm. They are not knowing the process they are following. So use authenticate software. Everything will work. There is no limitation on the using of the software. It's, it's, but it should be widely used rather than you are taking some of the out of the blue uh, software. Software is not issue for the readers, editors, if it's no. Perfect. Um, we are running out of time. So I think I'll close the Q&A section for now with a comment that we have received, which I think uh, should be shared. Uh, the person has written that I accept a majority of us fail in this part of storytelling about the findings. And thanks you for highlighting the same. Thank you. So uh, I'm very sorry that we have not been take, uh, able to address all the questions uh, that have been sent to us, but it is really nice to see how many queries there were. And uh, Dr. Amit, uh, thank you for addressing all these queries and for your topic as well. Uh, I think uh, I'll just uh, close with a vote of thanks. It's been my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. So I, on behalf of Emerald Publishing, the Faculty of Management Studies of Sabagamoa University of Sri Lanka, Gulf Medical University, 
and all attendees extend a very hearty thanks to a speaker of the day, Professor Amit Shankar, for sharing with us your valuable advice, guidance, and insights on the topic today, which was handy tips on how to write the findings and discussion of your manuscript. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, a webinar like this does not happen overnight, and the wheels of planning started rolling months ago. It requires extensive planning and a bird's eye uh, for details. We have been fortunate to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues in our endeavor to support researchers as best as we can through our webinar series. And hence, I would like to congratulate Faculty of Management Studies of Sabargamoa University of Sri Lanka, Gulf Medical University, and Emily Publishing Group for successfully conducting the fourth session of the research mentoring program. In particular, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Professor Atula Neanpala, Professor Devasri N. Jayanta, Professor MSM Aslam, Mr. Sundar Radhakrishnan, Professor Sudhi Rana, and members of the Emerald Publishing India team, Ms. Disha Lakanpal and Ms. Pooja Trivedi, in making this valuable webinar a success. And finally, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the audience, all academics from the universities worldwide researchers, economists, practitioners, students, and other invited guests for their active participation. I cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and the willingness to be a part of the Research Mentoring Program 2022. We look forward to all of you joining us again on 29th September for our next session on how to write conclusions, implications, and future directions of your manuscript, which will be conducted by a speaker, Dr. Jagroop Singh. And with that, I uh, thank you all once again for joining us today. And uh, I hope you all have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. And I must congratulate you people for organizing this type of session. Definitely, it's very helpful for the budding researcher because it's, this information is available nowhere that how to do it. And you find a very good team. This panel is very good. Excluding me, I am not considering myself as good, but excluding me, the team and panel is very good. And uh, you, we are doing very good work. So my all the best wishes and all congratulations to you for organizing this workshop for the betterment of the research in this in this June. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Amit, for such kind thank words. You. And it definitely helps to have speakers like you who willingly participate and share your knowledge and at such platform and join us in our on our quest to answer a lot of questions for the researchers. So thank you so much for being a part of this program. Thank you and uh, goodbye everyone. Thank you so much everyone. Everybody will receive a recording of the session and certificates will be shared uh, before the next session. Thank you so much.